Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Meltdown, biological men banned from women's college sports. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. From the College Fix College Athletic Conference bans biological men from women's sports. This isn't for all colleges everywhere. This is through the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, not the NCAA. There's still a lawsuit going on trying to force the NCAA to essentially follow this. But this is a big announcement from the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. These guys are the experts in the business of small college athletics. Big college athletics, NCAA. Small college athletics, NAIA. And it looks like the NAIA made the right decision. Quote, you're allowed to have separate but equal opportunities for women to compete, the group's president said. Leaders of the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics on Monday voted to approve a new policy that bars biological men from women's sports and what has been billed as the first national college governing body to make such a move amid growing concerns about transgender athletes in female sports. The transgender participation policy states it aims to support fair and safe competition opportunities for all student athletes. Quote, Title IX ensures there are separate and equal opportunities for female athletes. As a result, the NAIA offers separate categories of competition in all sports except for competitive cheer and competitive dance, which are both co-ed, according to their new policy. All eligible NAIA student athletes may participate in NAIA-sponsored male sports. Only NAIA student athletes whose biological sex is female may participate in NAIA-sponsored female sports. And that's the distinction. For biologically female athletes who have begun masculizing hormone therapy, the policy states they can participate in activities that are internal to the institution, such as workouts and practices. They may also participate in external competitions that do not fall under the purview of NAIA events because the NAIA can't control events that happen outside their purview. So they're making clear, when we're in control, you're not doing this. CBS Sports reported the Association's Council of Presidents approved the policy in a 20 to 0 vote Monday morning, quote, after a December survey indicated widespread support for the move. The Association's previous policy only applied to postseason competition. CBS adds, the NAIA is a national athletic governing body for 249 mostly small colleges across the country that are not part of the NCAA's three divisions of competition. The membership is 80% private schools. This decision does not apply to NCAA competitions because they are a fully separate organization and the NAIA has nothing to say over what happens with NCAA competitions. But we know there are a lot of different opinions out there, NAIA President Jim Carr told CBS Sports. For us, we believed our first responsibility was to create fairness and competition in the NAIA. We also think it aligns with the reasons Title IX was created. Of course, he's right about that. You're allowed to have separate but equal opportunities for women to compete. The NAIA is believed to be the first national college governing body to mandate that athletes compete according to their assigned sex at birth. In response to the development, the Conservative Independent Women's Forum posted praise on Twitter. Well, thank you, NAIA, for standing with female athletes and prioritizing their safety and equal opportunity. Women's sports are for women. You can't argue with logic like that. Now all eyes are turning to the larger, more popular National Collegiate Athletics Association to see if the decision will sway its leaders to make a similar move. Critics have contended that allowing biological men who identify as women to participate in female sports creates an unfair advantage and an unsafe environment. Quote, the NCAA, which is a separate entity to the NAIA, took the stance in 2022 that it would allow the national governing bodies for each individual sport to determine the eligibility of transgender athletes in women's sports, according to OutKick. The NCAA is deflecting decisions regarding biological males participating in women's sports to other decision makers so it doesn't get its hands dirty. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics Policy takes effect on August 1st. Last month, the NCAA was hit with a lawsuit from 16 female athletes who say they were forced to compete against and share locker rooms with men. The federal lawsuit argues the NCAA's rules about transgender athletes violate women's rights under Title IX. The College Fix reported at the time.
I want to get into this lawsuit, but I first want to show you some comments from the Washington Post. Naturally, the Washington Post is not happy about this new development. From the Washington Post, NAIA bans all transgender women from women's sports. With 241 member schools, most of them private with relatively low enrollments, the NAIA is overshadowed in size and influence by the NCAA, whose teams and events, including Monday night's men's basketball title game, are among the most popular in American sports. NCAA rules allow transgender athletes to compete if they adhere to the guidelines of their international sport governing bodies. The NCAA has generally advocated for inclusion but has resisted pressure to pull championship events from states that prohibit transgender athletes from competing in publicly funded school sports. And here's where they get upset. Quote, I think that the NAIA vote provides a feeling that the NCAA would have the latitude to do the same, said Anna Bayef, director of research for the queer sports advocacy group Athlete Ally. Quote, that feeling of latitude would be incredibly misguided. Trans athlete rights have long been the subject of conservative attacks and scrutiny, including at the K-12 college and Olympic levels. Anti-transgender activists and pro-normal people activists, just regular average people activists, and legislators argue that restricting or banning transgender athletes from competition is a matter of protecting women's sports under Title IX and keeping women and girls safe. Since 2020, about half of U.S. states have enacted measures banning transgender people and sometimes boys and men from publicly funded scholastic sports in the categories that align with their gender identities rather than their biological sex. Meanwhile, many international sport governing bodies have been grappling with how to institute scientifically sound and equitable rules. World Aquatics and World Athletics are among the groups that have heavily restricted the eligibility of transgender people barring them from competition if they've experienced testosterone-driven puberty. Quote, I'm 110% disappointed, said Mac Beggs, a transgender person and former NAIA wrestler for Life University in Marietta, Georgia. The NAIA does not track whether any trans athletes are currently among the approximately 83,000 participating in its sports, according to a spokesperson. The organization's 2023 to 2024 policy allows trans and non-binary athletes to compete in any gender category during the regular season. For postseason events, trans athletes not receiving gender-affirming hormone treatment may compete in co-ed sports or in single gender sports in the category associated with their gender assigned at birth or their biological gender. Transgender people who are receiving gender-affirming hormone treatment may compete in the women's category in the postseason provided they have already undergone one year of treatment. Transgender men taking medically prescribed gender-affirming testosterone may not compete on women's teams, but may compete on men's teams in the postseason. Chris Mosier, a trans rights activist and the first out transgender athlete to represent the United States in international competition, referenced recent anti-trans rhetoric as a potential influence on collegiate sports governing bodies. That's this lady, Riley Gaines. She's a big voice for biological female athletes and she's part of the lawsuit against the NCAA. Quote, the NAIA and NCAA, along with many other sports organizations, teams, and leagues, have been under attack by anti-trans groups and individuals who've made it their life's work to harm transgender people, Mosier wrote in an email. A policy change at this time, without a robust process of engaging experts, athletes, and people with lived experience, is solely based on political pressure. This is what really makes me wonder, how did these policies ever get so out of control that they didn't study first what the impact was on the other athletes, the athletes who were biologically female. Like what situations were you going to put them in to promote this agenda that, hey, anyone can be any gender. So all these female athletes have to live with this as girls and as women. Why? How? What experts said that was okay, except for the experts that wanted to push the agenda to make this happen? Who sat there and actually heard out everyone else? Who heard out the parents of these athletes? About 40 trans athletes are thought to compete in NCAA sports based set. In March, 16 current and former female college athletes filed a lawsuit against the NCAA over its trans athlete eligibility policy, demanding that the organization prohibit trans people from competing in women's events and that it redistribute any recognition those athletes have received. The plaintiffs allege that the NCAA violated Title IX by allowing trans athletes, such as University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thomas, to compete. Thomas won the 500-yard freestyle at the 2022 NCAA Division I Championships. And here's that lawsuit they keep talking about from the College Fix 
athletes sue NCAA to stop men from competing in women's sports. Among other things, they object to naked men being allowed to disrobe in front of non-consenting college women. And that's featured in their lawsuit. The National Collegiate Athletics Association was hit with a lawsuit from 16 female athletes who say they were forced to compete against and share locker rooms with men. The federal lawsuit argues the NCAA's rules about transgender athletes violate women's rights under Title IX. Women's rights advocate Riley Gaines, that's this lady, a plaintiff in the case, said the NCAA has refused to listen to female athletes' concerns. Quote, the NCAA continues to actively and openly discriminate against women on the basis of our sex. We issued a legal demand letter last year, but they haven't listened, Gaines said. The Free Press reports more. At the center of the class action lawsuit is Leah Thomas, the trans athlete who dominated the 2022 NCAA Swimming Championships while a student at the University of Pennsylvania. The suit says that both the NCAA and Georgia Tech, which hosted the event, knowingly violated Title IX, the federal statute that guarantees equal opportunity for men and women in college education and sports. The lawsuit, the first federal action of its kind, seeks to change the rules, rendering any biological males ineligible to compete against female athletes. It demands the NCAA revoke all awards given to trans athletes in women's competitions and reassign them to their female contenders. It also asks for damages for pain and suffering, mental and emotional distress, suffering and anxiety, expense costs, and other damages due to defendants' wrongful conduct. The case also alleges the NCAA violated female athletes' 14th Amendment rights by allowing, quote, naked men possessing full men genitalia to disrobe in front of non-consenting college women. The rules create, quote, situations in which unwilling female college athletes unwittingly or reluctantly expose their unclad bodies to males, subjecting women to a loss of their constitutional right to bodily privacy, according to the lawsuit. Former North Carolina State swimmer Kylie Allens, a plaintiff in the lawsuit, told the Free Press she found a dimly lit storage and utility closet under the bleachers to change in during one of the competitions with Thomas. Quote, I was literally racing U.S. and Olympic gold medalists, and I was changing in a storage closet at this elite level meet. Allens went on to say, I just felt that my privacy and safety were being violated in the locker room. Gaines, who also competed against Thomas as a student at the University of Kentucky, said they filed the lawsuit because the NCAA keeps running from accountability and responsibility and upholding the civil rights law that is Title IX. If the athletes win their case, it could impact eligibility rules at all 1,100 colleges and universities represented by the NCAA, making it such that all athletes born as males would be barred from competing in women's sports, according to the free press. And of course, that's what the goal is. Notably, the attorney leading the lawsuit is Bill Bach, a former member of the NCAA Committee on Infractions, according to the Independent Council on Women's Sports. Bach resigned from the committee in February after expressing frustration with the NCAA's transgender rules. So Bach, the lead attorney, knows the NCAA from the inside out. From a college fix, NCAA leader resigns over transgender policy. It's massive, essentially authorized cheating. And Bach says the association's stance discriminates against female student athletes. An NCAA leader resigned in February after saying he grew frustrated with the association's decision to allow male student athletes who identify as transgender females to compete in women's sports. William Bach III, who has served on the association's committee of infractions since 2016, announced his resignation in a letter on February 9th to NCAA President Charlie Baker, the Washington Examiner reports. A prominent sports attorney from Indiana, Bach said he used to believe the Athletics Association was dedicated to competitive fairness and protection of equal opportunities for student athletes. Quote, this conviction has changed as I've watched the NCAA double down on regressive policies which discriminate against female student athletes, he wrote. Bach said he became increasingly concerned after former University of Pennsylvania swimmer William Leah Thomas, a male who identifies as female, won an NCAA Division I championship on the women's team in 2022. Quote, if I'm there in a sport integrity role where there's massive, essentially authorized cheating taking place and dramatically harming women, it's just a contradiction, he wrote. I just felt like I couldn't seem to do that any longer and needed to resign with the hope that maybe it will cause other people to look at the issue more closely. Fox cited the NCAA's three-phase participation policy, which it began implementing in January 2022 that would allow transgender student athletes to play in their desired sports so long as they met certain requirements. Among those requirements is documentation that proves testosterone levels were below the maximum allowable levels for any given sport. 
However, Bach rejected that policy, arguing much of the biological development that occurs before and around the time of puberty puts biological men at an advantage even if they're required to suppress testosterone levels before competition. Bach's resignation received praise from Riley Gaines, one of the female athletes who competed on the UPenn team with Thomas. And of course, now Bach and Riley Gaines have collaborated together to make this lawsuit happen against the NCAA to change things. Among other concerns, Gaines testified to Congress last year that she and her teammates had to undress in the same locker room as Thomas and NCAA officials refused to intervene. The conservative legal organization Alliance Defending Freedom also responded with praise to the news of Bach's resignation. Quote, this is the kind of courage we need for women and girls. ADF wrote on Twitter, let's see more people in positions of power standing up for female athletes and for reality. Now the pressure is on the NCAA to respond to these complaints and to respond to what the other association is doing. They've moved out of the transgender business. Now it's time for the NCAA to really look at this and say, do you really think you should be in the transgender business or shouldn't you? Maybe you need to create a separate category, but you can't put biological women and girls through this and their families and affect their life's work and affect their future opportunities and not give them a chance to compete fairly against each other. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.